discussion today, we are not against sexuality, but we think it's important that individuals have the chance to fully learn their own sexuality through experience and experimentation with partners who with they have a comparatively more equal bargaining relationship with than they do when the kinds of media influences saturate the, the ways in which they understand their sexuality as they do in the status quo. So Steph and I are going to make that case for you today by talking about two things. First of all, exactly how the dominant media paradigm today does create an objectification and perversion of sexuality for individuals. Second of all, how when you get this experiential, experiential, I'll find that word at some point in the speech, learn sexuality, that's a much better way for people to be able to approach sex and gender relations. And then what's going to be interwoven, so let's dive right into this case. First of all, perversion of sexuality. What we recognise in proposition today is how arousing images saturate society. We're not just talking about, you know, the real, really, really obvious, you know, when you're standing there in a bikini, um, next to a car, kind of images they do. We're talking about all sorts of things no. where you, which try to portray to people's sense of arousal in all senses. And these things do permeate far, far deeper than opposition would have you believe, which means that people come into contact with them much more frequently than, again, they would have you believe. So, and particularly, we see this through advertising. And we see particularly it draws upon female sexuality as the dominant mechanism for female sub products. And there's a couple of reasons for this. First of all, as first, first props went out, we just think there are more men at the top within businesses when they're actually pushing these kinds of things, and they have an entrenched position from the patriarchy to push their messages. Second of all, there's a perception that sex sells, and a perception that particularly female sexuality, and in particular perversion, tits out, big bum, those sorts of things, those things sell. And the problem is that helps women as well as men, unlike what opposition think, which means that even women will buy your products when you end up putting these kinds of sexuality out there in, in the image. And of course it's kind of half dependency, this is how they use. But even when we look to the ways in which men their, their sexuality is portrayed, for instance in the Old Spice advert, we had the man who went from sort of forest to jacuzzi, <laughs> this, like, that sort of dominant macho image, right, which people are forced in particular binaries of how they should approach their own sexuality. And so that is problematic because it creates a particular message which is hard for anyone else to begin to opt out of where they want to portray a different kind of sexuality because it's not going to sell as well. It hasn't been proven to sell in the dominant market. And so that's why you get, for instance, adverts like women who are stretched out across cars. Are they riding an orgasm or is their neck just broken on that car? Right? <laughs> that's their problem, right? These things, look, they have a relation of violence tied up within that. And even when it's not at that end of the spectrum, ladies and gentlemen, even when it's more moderate, right, we think it becomes norm to sell the female body in these kinds of ways. And that is harmful because it creates a form of objectification which right. leads people to view others as objects, which is likely to feed into their ideas of sex in general, right? The point at which you view someone else's sexual gratification tied up with your own, it's hard to do that as independent and therefore respect them in sexual relations, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. So that's a problem that's it. But moreover, we think is that, and this is the crux of the debate, really, ladies and gentlemen, that arousal is learnt, right? So op come up and they want to say, look, you have a stable identity and whenever you see something, you can challenge it. That might well be the case with porn, ladies and gentlemen, because you know you're buying into a product which is primarily built for arousal. It's not so if I'm going to just like look at an advert and flicking through like a ladies' mag, right? And I'm seeing things like Tic Tacs or whatever being sort of like have these, these sort of subtle messages which begin to shape the ways in which I view myself. That's so not a choice, and you're not in the paradigm to be able to actually challenge that ever. Which means you're more likely to get those dominant messages feeding into the way in which you view yourself, right? It means that's why we say women being strongly subservient within the bedroom. And let's be clear, we're not saying that you wouldn't otherwise be subservient where you'd have an equal space in how you learnt it. The point is, in the status quo, we can when never know when people are fully, freely choosing that as a way in which to interact with their sexuality and understand their partners. And we think at the extreme end, that's incredibly harmful, precisely because, particularly for women, precisely because the subservient can be incredibly upsetting, right? The point at which women have learnt, some women have learned arousal, to which they can only get off when their partner has to shout to them, you're a slut or a whore. Those are things which, even they are aroused by it can have incredibly long-lasting detriments to their self-esteem, precisely because of the meaning of those words, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. So let's look second of all at why our model is yeah. better. Because what do you think? When you remove this massive cultural influence, which by the way, we don't think feminists can just change, precisely because everyone has been co-opted by this narrative, and even if you get some people to buy into it, you can't, you can't get all women to be able to mass a mass campaign on the entirety of the way in which the society is structured. Unfortunately, outside of debating, feminism isn't exactly a nice word for most women that don't necessarily yeah. want to be tarnished with that, ladies and gentlemen. So we think what you do when you remove this is you remove a massive stunting to people's ability to fully enjoy their sexual yes. sex. Yes, sir. How does the state measure when people have learned their sexual identity if they remove Okay, now, we can never fully measure, but we're telling you what we do 
do that is a comparatively better place. Why is that? First of all, when you put it into the fine domains which people have to seek out to access, we know they have chosen to do that, and that means they are more likely to have a critical eye to what they're actually having their identity shaped up. Second of all, we say there will be far less of the kinds of pernicious influences within the dominant public, right? Which means that you're much less likely to get these levels of objectification to be being shaped. We just don't think it's natural that women would necessarily be the ones who have all the attention put on them in like sexual relations in terms of how we phrase sex in the public discourse, where they're not these kinds of influences. So what happens instead? We think people learn their sexuality and their sexual arousal through experimentation with those who they are attracted to. And this is quite obvious because we had sex before we had media, ladies and gentlemen, right? People were able to be attracted to each other and have relations with other people. But why is it actually better? First of all, we think that sex is more fulfilling for all parties. We think it's a freer kind of sex because you don't have these dominant culture influences shaking the way in which you think you must have to interact with your partner in order for you to get off and them to get off. Which means you're much more likely to do things which are first which is more experimental, maybe you'll find other things which you wouldn't have otherwise stumbled upon. And that's true for both men and for women, ladies and gentlemen, right? Men may not want to be trapped within this sort of dominant paradigm. Maybe they want to be the subs in some relationships. We think that's the kind of thing which conceptions can break down over time, which you don't get when otherwise you're always going to be deep into that message. Second of all, it destigmatizes practices which are currently perceived to be deviant sexual practices because they don't fall within that dominant form in which society understands what sexuality is. Because to opt out of that kind of norm and to express a different preference to either in public or more likely to your partner, you're more likely to be faced with ridicule when there's a dominant understanding of sexuality which the media continuously reinforces through all sides. When you remove that, that is the point at which people are more able to express, say, like, oh, maybe can you suck my toes, or they can do other things, I'm not going to reveal any of my other things. That's the point at which they can do that, ladies and gentlemen, because they're not scared of people laughing at them, because they're very nice guys. Um, so, and that's the point at which you then get outlets being more likely to provide those kinds of services for them in the adult industry as well. We think, ladies and gentlemen, you get a more healthy form of sexuality on our side of the house, we propose.